Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics Mother's Day Special. So today we're going to be describing a variation on the stable marriage problem, which is a uh, famous mathematical algorithm. Uh, so the discussion that we do today isn't going to involve marriages at all, but uh, a group of kids who've brought gifts for their mothers on Mother's Day. But the original statement of the problem goes a little bit like this. So there's a very small village with 10 women and 10 men. And a matchmaker wants to know if there is a way to arrange 10 stable marriages out of these 20 people. So, for example, a stable marriage happens if we have, that's a lady, a green wife and a green husband, for example, and an orange wife and an orange husband. Now, these two marriages are stable uh, as long as the wife and husband prefer each other to anyone else. This marriage would not be stable if, for example, the orange wife, the green wife, if the green wife preferred the orange husband at the same time as the orange husband preferring the green wife. If this happened, then these two would run off together and the marriage would not be stable any longer. So the way we're going to be describing it today is themed for Mother's Day. So we've got a group of five mothers and five children, and the children have come together and bought five different gifts for their mothers on Mother's Day. And they've decided that uh, in order for the mothers to get their, um, their, their best possible gift, they're going to give the mothers some input in the matter. So over on this board, we've got two different charts. And in this chart, we've got our five possible mothers at the top. We've got A, B, C, D, and E. And uh, all of the mothers can see all five possible gifts, and so they rank them. Uh, mother A would prefer gift number one, but she'd take gift number two, then gift number three, then gift number five, then gift number four afterwards. And the rest of the mothers have ranked their preferences as well. And then the children have also ranked their preferences. So we've got our gifts, number one, two, three, four, and five. And each kid would ideally like their gifts to go to their mother first, but they're willing to rank the other mothers in case their mother wants something different. So uh, child or gift number one, for example, is going to mother A ideally, but then it would go to D, C, B, or E afterwards. And so we're going to start the algorithm. So mother A, chooses gift number one. And mother B chooses gift number one as well. C chooses two, D chooses one, and E chooses two. And so on this chart, we've got for gift number one, mother A has chosen it, and mother D has chosen it, and mother B has chosen it. And for gift number two, we've got mother C and mother E. And so here a problem arises. We've got three different mothers who all want gift number one and two mothers who want gift number two. And so then the child's preference comes into play. Mother B, unfortunately, can't have gift number one. And so we cross her off from both charts. And mother D can't have gift number one. And mother E cannot have gift number two. So in round one, we've had five different proposals of sorts. We've got the mothers proposing which gift they would like to have. And we've got three rejections. Five proposals and three rejections. And so we'll move on to round number two. So number, a mother B was rejected the first time, so she'll choose gift number four this time. And mother D was rejected, she chooses number two. And mother E was rejected and chooses number one. And this time, we've got a couple more things to cross off. This pairing doesn't work. 
and C's pairing didn't work any longer because Mother D decided that she would like gift number two. And so with the child's preference placing D higher than C, C was crossed off the list. And B is the only one who has proposed that she would like gift number four, so that is stable for now. So in round number two, we've had three proposals and two rejections. And so we'll move on to round number three. So this time, Mother C is going to ask for gift number one, and Mother E is going to ask for gift number five. And see, we're going to have one more rejection this time for Mother C. And the rest are stable for now. So we had two proposals this round and one rejection. We'll move on to round number four. Mother C asks for gift number five, and we already know that this is going to be crossed off. And if we move on to round number five, Mother C will ask for gift four. Mother B still has priority. And round number six is going to be where our algorithm ends. Mother C is going to ask for gift number three, and she has top priority on that gift. So everyone is stable. She didn't upset any of the previous, uh, previous arrangements by asking for gift number three, and so we can't cross anybody else off the list, and we've reached a stable arrangement. And that took six rounds. Now I'm going to be discussing the math for this problem in a blog post and I'm going to link that in the description of this video below. But I'd like to explain one more cool math thing that is involved in this problem before, before we go. So we've seen what it's like if the mothers propose their own arrangement, if the mothers ask for the gift first. And we've seen that it comes to a stable arrangement. But it's possible that a different stable arrangement also exists where both the mothers and the children are happy with who got their gift. So let's see what happens if we use blue chalk. Let's see what happens if instead of the mothers asking first, if the gifts, if, if the order is reversed. So we're going to have gift number one is proposed to mother number A. And gift two goes to its first choice, mother B. And gift three goes to mother C. Gift four goes to D. And I just did this wrong. <laughs> so. There we go. This will make more sense this time. So gift number one was proposed to mother A. And so she's got gift number one in her chart. And gift number two goes to mother B. But number two is the <laughs> last choice of mother B. But that's OK. Just keep going. Uh, gift number three goes to mother C. Also the last choice, but we'll just keep moving here. Gift number four goes to D. And gift number five goes to E. And so of all of the proposals this way, we've got five proposals that are taken. And there are no rejections that are happening because each gift was intended for a different mother. So we don't have anyone to cross off of our list. And so this is a stable arrangement. And so we've seen that depending on which side proposes to the other, that the arrangement can vary greatly. And this time it works out not in the mother's favor, as three of them got their last choice. But they're mothers, and they'll graciously take it anyways. 
So um, that is a, a brief explanation of the stable marriage problem algorithm. Uh, I'm going to be describing the mathematics in a blog post um, that I will link in the description of this video below. So please click on that if you're interested in learning more about the mathematics. So uh, happy Mother's Day to my mother, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more math resources.